decisions and so his fight for the WBA light middleweight championship against the holder Ayub Kaluli. Kaluli, a Ugandan fighting out of Denmark, is one of the toughest fighters around. In a professional career stretching back to 1976, he's had 36 contests, he's won them all, 18 inside the distance. Sugar Ray Leonard, an Olympic champion in Montreal in 76, started his professional career in 1977, and in that time he's had 30 bouts, winning 29, only 9 of which have gone the distance. And his one defeat was at the hands of Roberto Duran, that was when losing his welterweight title, but he of course avenged that defeat in the same year, winning back the crown. So that's the fight then, Kaluli the champion against Sugar Ray Leonard, the challenger. At ringside in the vast Astrodome in Houston, Reg Guthridge. But first, here are the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger from Palmer Park, Maryland, the very exciting and talented World Boxing Council welterweight champion of the world, vying for the junior middleweight championship of the world at 153 pounds he's on my left from the blue corner this is sugar ray leonard ladies and gentlemen from uganda now fighting out of denmark he's undefeated he weighs in at 153 pounds let's welcome for the first time in this country the champion of the world are you Kalule. In Denmark, they always chant Lulu, Lulu when this fellow's boxing. I've seen that quite a few times. There's the rundown. So both 10 stone, 13. The light middleweight limit, as we know it in Europe, is uh, 11 stone. And the other version of this was held originally by Morris Hope, who was beaten by Wilfred Benitez. So Ray Leonard, the challenger, Angelo Dundee, just give him the final clap hands let's go to work and the referee Carlos Berrocol from Panama who refereed Minter and Hagler in London so now let's see how the Southpaw Kaluli gets on against Leonard who's moved up a division and surprisingly come in at the same weight as Kaluli I think his world weight days really are numbered he's growing by the hour at the scene Leonard and what a start doesn't hang around, Southpaw style doesn't bother him at all, Leonard. But remember, Kaluli unbeaten. Takes a good punch. Past performances with the Ugandan hasn't shown him to be a really heavy puncher, but he bangs to the body a bit. He's been working on that. He beat Kevin Finnegan, among others. Sugar Ray Seals. Good tradesman, Kaluli. But Leonard always able to change his style as he did in the two fights with Roberto Duran. He can box, he can fight, he can stand off. It really is an intriguing match. Midway through the first round. It seems to me the Danes said that Kaluli, whom they train Borg Pro and, and company, said that they want him to work on uh, Leonard's body, use that strength, because Leonard really may not be as strong at the light middleweight limit as he was at welterweight. He has ideas, Leonard, of going into three divisions eventually and fighting Marvin Hagler at the full middleweight limit of 11 stone six. Well, it's good catches, catch can boxing at the moment. Could have surprised Leonard as much as Kaluli, really, because the Ugandan took his best shot and came straight back. His hands well tucked up there, absolutely. I tell you, he's no mug. But what a fast puncher, Leonard, who says he wants to stop him. And Angelo Dundee, the trainer, thinks he will. And a little chat at the end of the first round. Really, there's no need for Leonard to do that. He's, he's so good, he doesn't need to do all that chat. And there you are, you've got to get applause from your son. He even makes commercials like the old man. Right. 
into the second round and what a good opening round that was if you think of something that's set for 15 you could forgive them for taking uh, no chances in the opening round but then there's such a star fighter he goes looking for a win early wants to take the play away a bit from Flynn. he is a bit methodical and in the fights that I've seen clearly in particular in Denmark where he now lives with his wife and family he's never really been a punch out but of course they all hurt in this game Leonard's tactics are now. He's trying to draw this man at him a bit, but he gets himself tucked up behind those punches. It's difficult. Leonard was telling me before the fight that he thought he could uh, display a bit of punching power now that he was moving up and really getting body development. He even lanky a bit when he was in uh, Montreal to win the gold medal there. Was at the 10 stone limit. Dundee promises, he says, you know, this fellow's a long way from his actual potential, even at 25, and he hits you so hard with that right hand. So doubles up well, Leonard, with those hooks, short punches, right through Kalulis guard. Kalulis puts the fuse into the busted early on. Really is a disciplined fighter in every way here, Kalulis. He trains like really tremendous trainer. But often, you know, in this game it's that power of punch that may count when the skills are fairly equal. So the countdown then for the second round. Oh, he made, made Kaluli get away from him a bit lively there and that punch right on the bell he says how do you like that let's bring him on come on what do you think of that the timekeeper saying well let's bring him on they think it's showtime and these fellas are trying to punch holes in each other. Well, certainly Leonard is, anyway. There was uh, quite a bit of opinion, and I, I almost subscribed to it, that this could have gone 15 rounds. Uh, but the way Leonard's warming up to this fight, uh, I have doubts about that. Why well, he's got time to brush his hair in the middle of all that. But once he's tested that Kalulis not that much, as they say in pro boxing, a banger, I have a feeling that Leonard is going to take a few chances. He showboats, but he's got the greatness to go with it. Well, that's the heaviest Leonard ever weighed, and he's trying to make good use of that extra weight, isn't he? He's already fought two blown uh, middleweights there, Leonard, but they were fairly low class and beat them both. The referee, and you can barely see him around here, is from Panama, Carlos Baracol. Quite rightly, staying away from some good action. A little bit of puffiness, I suspect, showing around Kalula's face. He's, he's taking good punches and it's... Uh, Probably then at the same, well, how do I draw this man out? How do I make him drop those arms? Remember, Kalulis been in a lot of 15-round fights. Obviously not in the, the same league with a challenger like this. The lightweight division, those kind of punches from Leonard would have put a man down, but Lula is absorbing them well. He tells me he's never been on the deck. It was only stopped a long time ago in uh, Tanzania when somebody caught him with a thumb in the eye and he had to retire. 
and he hasn't been beaten since 1974. And that, of course, was a three-round contest in Tanzania. Well, he's not explosive, Kaluli, but I tell you, he's a workman. then and Leonard ahead but Kaluli had a better round in the third round anyway he leveled that a bit there it is she's missing with a few rounds lost range a bit Good shot to the body though, that was a good punch. You could really hear the thud here from close up. Clearly he's not a natural right hand southpaw. Just picked it up from his brother, he thought that was the way to box when he was an amateur. What a good exchange, they'll put their heads a bit. And he's got Kaluli going, isn't he, or not? No, he's fighting back, he soaks it up well, Kaluli. When Leonard unloads, he really is a spectacular boxer. But Kaluli's absorbed everything. Got a bit of steel in that chin. And he'll need to have, if they keep landing like that, a much better fight than the Americans thought it was going to be. Well, there's no pretense of defense here. They're just getting stuck in. And he's just backing off there, Kaluli, trying to find a little hiding place for a minute to pull himself together, but full of heart the whole time and stalking away there and I think pleased to hear the bell you can have a look at that fast action ducking and diving clearly but he catches that almost with the tip of the glove that one goes by and that was the one that stunned clearly really caught him on the temple but he fought back instinctively and again there just caught at the edge of the blow into the fifth and really there's been enough action for 15 i've seen often seen long distance fights with fewer punches than this at this weight and then again leonard has this habit of knowing he's got to get in there and do his thing he's very conscious of the fact that he carries the champion's mantle uh, and in this fight to remind you again only the challengers but he can hang on to the two championships because they belong to the rival bodies How about this then? Kaluli has the severity to fight back a bit. Dennis doesn't always get that. Really only Duran and to some extent Wilfredo Benitez did that. And we know what a good fighter Benitez is and now a champion again. Consistent straight punching from Kaluli. This is exactly as I've seen him before. Hasn't tried to change his pattern at all. And again to the body, they're trying to tire Leonard, not a bad tactic, and believe it or not, getting some of the crowd on his side for Lulu. Angelo Dundee in Leonard's corner, getting a bit concerned, no doubt. So, come on, let's take this man out. If it goes to 15, he could still be dangerous. They're yelling in Leonard's corner, go for the body. He clearly can take a better punch to the body than he does to the chin. Because he really is like iron around there. 
remember never being on the deck, but there are times when he's wobbled, isn't he? And then comes back, takes a deep breath, comes back. Oh, what a punch, that uppercut. There's no protection for that. If you, if you ain't it right, Leonard, there's no way it can be stopped. It looks like he's got him on the hook, at least this crowd at the Houston Astrodome thinks so. But uh, Kalulis disputing that again. Oh, and this line is coming roaring back, if you'll forgive that one. Well, I'm glad that Kalulis told them he's no pushover. <laughs> Round seven, it seems to me that the challenger, Ray Leonard, and the red-hot favourite, of course, is now going to say to himself, well, I can't afford to run out of steam with this fellow. I've got to outsmart him as well as outpunch him, because, to be honest, he's got to be better than everybody thought, including Leonard. Really you don't have an unbeaten record with luck. He's got to be a good fighter to protect that. And he certainly won his share as an amateur. Didn't compete, of course, in the Montreal Games because of the walkout. Look at this. What a good start of this round for Kaluli. Shaking his head, Leonard, saying, no, they didn't hurt. But I'll tell you what, they're scoring. And the Panamanian and Puerto Rican judges have got to note that. And it's turned out a very fair crowd indeed in Texas because they are cheering Kaluli on. And they've been getting a bit hysterical in Leonard's corner there, yelling, move, move. He's responding to the corner a little bit realised he was hanging around and getting caught and wondering, as I said right from the off, how can he open this man up? He's really like an oyster. A good round so far, Kaluli. Well, they now know that uh, the name Kaluli here in Texas is not an anagram. But he really is a, a worthy light middleweight champion of the WBA. And he's missing there, trying to pick them up, Leonard. But Kaluli just trying to take the play away from him. Absolute fascinating championship fight. play there you can see where Leonard is as they say ducking and diving wondering how he can get out of the way he's showing signs of frustration I think Leonard and a good shot again from Kaluli and again well round eight and the timekeeper again getting as enthusiastic as a paying customer, let's bring him out, he says. Clearly had a, certainly had a good seventh round. Then it got off with the usual flashy start, was in command, and now Kalulu's starting to get back a bit in the picture. So there you go, if it goes to 15, referee from Panama, judge from Panama, one from Puerto Rico. The 10 points per round system. Seems to me that the war hoop from the Texans are really cheering on both men. They're so pleased that it's uh, been a good fight because reading the press, they really thought it was going to be what's known in the business in America as a one-round Hogan. Well, that was never on with Kaluli. 
only beaten once, Ray Leonard, remember, by Roberto Duran in Montreal and then regained it in the championship, the World Away Championship in New Orleans. No use Leonard waiting for Kaluli to wear himself out because he just isn't going to fish and punch his by his own exertion. Well, this man puts his thumbs over the tops of the gloves there, clearly. It's an unusual grip, that. But I think it's partly the way these 10 ounce Mexican gloves are made. Remember, uh, this is the first time that Leonard's had 10 ounces on. He usually has 8 ounce, which are at the world weight limit, and then they go higher from world weights up to heavies. Just in case there's three knockdowns in any one round by one boxer, the fight's all over. And a good left hook as well there. He staggers Kaluli, but regains his uh, composure within seconds. That's the thing, I think, that's been so frustrating for Leonard. Round nine then, and really what fascinated in many ways championship this has been because Kaluli's decided that he can take Leonard's best punches. Early on we wondered if he could or not because Leonard unloaded some good stuff. And now there's ice back in the place in Leonard's punches. He does have the adaptability to change style, but will Kaluli let him? Remember, the champion's got that little bit more going for him because he's defending the title. He has more to lose. Leonard can always go back to the welterweight championship. Amazing how Leonard lands his best punches and then clearly comes right back. He's standing right on top of him, Leonard, anchoring his feet to the ground to get every ounce of power into those punches. Oh, it's tremendous stuff now from Leonard, but Kaluli will not be denied. Now there was a sagging of Kaluli's legs, and I'm wondering now if he's going to go, has, has Leonard done it or not? Gainness coming from the champion the whole time, trying to say, no thanks mate, it's not all going to be your way. But Leonard able to switch his punches there, but I tell you, gets a bit tired punching himself out against Kaluli. Well, Leonard can't believe it, and neither can the crowd when the champion comes back in the ninth round. Doesn't change his tactics much, Kaluli, but he gets away with what he's got. All straight punches, arm strength, but must hurt with him because he's a strong man at the weight. Never been on the deck, amateur or pro, remember Kaluli. Now Leonard really is looking tired having exerted himself for that start of that round. No question he's looking with a cluster of punches that can stop Kaluli in his tracks, but now must be beginning to wonder whether he can produce them or not. Very hard round indeed. Oh, Kaluli tumbles back a bit there, but I don't know, he's, he must have spring in those ankles, he comes back up again. But he's got him under, that's the first time that Kaluli has ever been down, and the sheer strength of Leonard's punches, what a fantastic fighter he is. Now can Kaluli get over his first knockdown? He's understood, no, he's gonna stop him in the corner. I'm not sure, what do you think of that? A handspring as well by Leonard, 
I'm really not sure whether the referee was not a bit premature there. Kalouli doesn't seem to be complaining too much, and I'm always on the referee's side to be too soon than too late. And obviously he thought Kalouli was glassy-eyed and his legs were too stiff and he couldn't come out in the ninth round. I mean, what a sensational ending for Leonard, who at periods there looked as though he was struggling a bit. But when he switched it on, he really did show the greatness of a champion to win now titles at two weights, welterweight and light middleweight. So when Leonard really gets his man going, he doesn't let them off the hook too often and really reels away from it, Kalouli. And when he goes down and then gets up, he gives me the impression he signals to the referee, really, to say, I don't want any more, and I quit. And the new WBA junior middleweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. In case you missed it, the official time is 2.59 of the ninth round, a second short of the end of the round. Kalouli on his feet had his hands down and the referee stopped the fight because Kalouli could not continue. He was rocked with right hands. Let's go to the ring and Bill Mazur. Thank you, Sal. I had to tell you, I'm gonna lose an eardrum here. The noise is so great. Mr. Two-Time Champion. Was he a tough night's work? Well, Kalule once again proved the boxing career wrong. He was a very tough and durable champion. I gave the guy a great deal of uh, credit. He put up a tremendous fight, and uh, I like to eat my words when I called him an advanced southpaw. The guy is truly a worthy champion. Sugar, did he at any time in the fight hurt you? Not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, I thought I uh, pulled a muscle in my left, left arm. That's the reason I had to lay back until I got myself uh, readjusted. There was a rumor that you had hurt your left side in training. Is that a lot of baloney? Not at all, Bill. A lot of baloney. I feel that I prepared for this fight. Unfortunately, I was in tip-top shape and no injuries at all. This the best win you've ever had? Well, I'll tell you what it is. That means I am one man that is two champions in one world. I think that's quite unique. I will tell you this, it really was. Ray, seated next to me, is Marvin Hagler. Would you like a piece of him? No question about it, because I regard Marvin Hagler as one of the greatest middleweight champions in the world. And somewhere down the line, he deserves a big payday, and I will give him that. But you know who's next? Tommy Hearn. Well, Juanita, I can't tell you what you did to your husband, but something triggered him off. I knew it was going to go in between 8 and 9 and 8, 10. Ladies I knew it. Did you tell him you got to get home? Let's get this thing I over told him, with. I said, let's go home. Let's go home. Get it what over What do you think with. about it, baby? Your father really looked good. Mm -hmm. You, you it picked really it in 10 good. rounds. Mm -hmm. You're going to be the next Muhammad Ali of this century. You're picking the rounds now. <laughs> and here, glad we got it over with. Yeah, ready to go home. Everything went well. Here comes Dad. Here comes Sugar Ray Leonard. I want to tell you, Sugar Ray, your wife and your son both picked the round. Said we want to go home. Well, you know, Freddie, uh, they all, all the boxing critics say this guy was just a pushover. And he proved it wrong once again, just like Larry Bonds proved all the boxing critics wrong. The guy as a champion, and I think outside his family, the belt was the most valuable thing in his life. You know, I don't think I've ever seen you without less movement than you had that you just stood right in front of him like you knew that this guy couldn't hurt you and you went right after him. Well, that proved my effectiveness. They say that this Kalula was much too big, much too strong for me. But you know, Ferdy, I feel that I've been learning a great deal from fighting great fighters and champions like Pepin, I mean, like Wilfredo Benitez, Roberto Duran, and on and on. And I'm able to put my punches together and the guy, the guys I'm facing today are truly champions. And very tough champions at that. He took everything you threw there for a while. I hit him with some shots that I, I thought would normally take out a uh, heavyweight champion. But uh, I, once again, I give Ayub Kalula a great deal of credit. We were listening in the corner, both Jenks and Angel were saying, use your left hand. You're going right hand crazy. You seem to be hitting him with every right hand you threw. Yeah, well, I tried to pretty much uh, emulate what I did to uh, uh, Tony Cheverini with the right hands. But this guy proved that he was uh, more a little more elusive. And I, I thought I uh, pulled a muscle in my left hand. That was the left arm, rather, and that's the reason I uh, minimized the punching. But I feel great for it, and I'm glad that you're here once again. All right, one last thing. We're heading into maybe the biggest fight since the first Ali Frazier fight. Your feelings on that right before you go to the dressing well, room? Well, before I go to the dressing room, I'm truly looking forward to fighting Tommy Hearns, and Hearns knows fully well I will defeat him. <laughs> Here's Tommy, watch your fight. The time has come. Reality is September 16th. 
all the talk you've been making. I'm not trying to throw on the show for TV. I want you to prove every word that you said. Right. I'm meet. definitely a man to see. Put, put down the microphone. You sound like a dummy. I'm, so, hey, I'm definitely a man and to see, with, Ray. Hey, and I'll back tell you one thing, Ray, you forget all you say. Everything you say, Ray, will make